What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and I want to give you a software tour of what's powering the Samsung Galaxy Tab. In a lot of ways it's very stock Android 2.2 but in a lot of other ways there's some very unique Samsung tweaks that have gone in to make this very tablet friendly. So as you consider which tablet might be right for you this holiday season, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let me preface this by saying this is the unlocked European version. When this is released in the US, under all four major carriers, uh, there will be some tweaks that are going to be made, so all these features that you see today may not actually make it to the carrier versions. Just want to give you a full disclaimer. Alright, let's go ahead and unlock this. You can see a pretty similar and familiar Android lock screen, and this is running Android 2.2. So I'll go ahead and unlock it. And I do have a SIM card in here. This is the European unlocked version. Uh, and I want to sort of show you what functionalities you're going to get uh, when you have a network connectivity. So we are, of course, connected to AT&T. Uh, however, this is just running on AT&T's edge network as the 3G bands in the US are not supported. So I have not done any on-screen customization here. These are what the icons are going to look like when you first turn on your Galaxy Tab. So you notice across the top, you've got one, two, three, four, five home screens. Uh, going to be populated by your typical Google search. You've got a plug in here to show your active applications. You can sort of control them, uh, typical task manager type stuff. And you've got your uh, phone, video, maps, YouTube, market, and sort of your launcher buttons across the bottom. Interestingly enough with this tablet, when you're going into phone, you actually do get a full phone functionality here. And since I do have an AT&T SIM card, uh, let me show you that it does work. So let's go ahead and jump back to, uh, to logs here. And here is that AT&T customer support. I'll go ahead and call them and show you that it works. And it will uh, default into speaker. Welcome to at and And you could go ahead and actually talk using the built-in mic there on the right. So you hear that this doesn't work. And you can put this up to your head. I mean, it is just a big phone. Uh, probably more realistic is that you may want to use this with Skype. Although I doubt you're going to try and carry this in your pocket and use it as a phone. Uh, you do have the option. And sort of now that we're into the phone uh, area, take a look at the customization that's been done here. So there is the dialer. You have a sort of default one for video call, uh, which is going to launch a sort of a video call uh, client. And if the person you're calling is compatible, uh, it'll launch the front facing 1.3 megapixel camera. Go ahead and view your logs and see who you just called. If they had a picture, it'll show up right there. You can email them directly. Go ahead and view all your contacts right here. I don't have any stored in here. If you have your contacts breaking up by groups, and your favorites, you can tell us is European, by the way, favorites is spelled. So I'll go ahead and jump back home. Uh, so that's sort of what the phone functionality is going to look like. Let's go ahead and jump into application and take a look at some of the other tweaks. So this is going to look very familiar if you have a Galaxy S device. Uh, this is sort of the touch whiz uh, way they've encapsulated the icons. Instead of sort of the wheel scrolling you get on Android 2.2, everything is encapsulated and you scroll horizontally. So let's look at uh, some of the uh, tweaks we have here. Let's go ahead and jump right into and look at memos. Looks a little bit different, it's same functionality, just a, uh, a little bit customized here uh, for the Galaxy Tab. And this is a great time to actually show you what the keyboard is going to look like uh, on the Galaxy Tab. So I'll go ahead and uh, type memos here. We'll go ahead and start a new one. Uh, keyboard looks very similar to what we see on an iPhone, uh, just larger. Uh, pretty responsive and you are going to get sort of your same uh, great Android autocorrect features if you decide to turn it on that you get on any Android device. Uh, if you want to hold it with two hands, it's pretty easy to type. And I have it set for haptic feedback. And it works relatively well. Uh, of course, when you rotate it, you're going to get a landscape keyboard, uh, which is a bit hard to stretch your thumbs out, but certainly usable. Uh, if you want to sort of type on it like this, uh, like you can on an iPad, for example, you're going to have a bit of difficulty, especially if you have larger hands uh, seeing the keys. So go ahead and jump back out of this. Let's go continue with some of the other software tweaks that we have. So we'll uh, sort of continue this application tour and you can see uh, sort of what's going to be on here by default. Let's go ahead and look at calendar. This is sort of one of the things that Samsung heavily customized uh, for tablet use. So you've got sort of your month view uh, is going to come up by default, but you can customize what shows up and all your events would show up down below. You can view which month you want to jump to uh, right down at the very bottom. If you want to view all of your tasks for the day, you can jump on over to uh, today. I don't have any, so nothing's going to show up. You can choose a view by day, week, month, like we just saw. Uh, list view, don't have any, or today since I don't have anything in there. Uh, nice customization job that Samsung's done. Uh, this looks to be very intuitive and user-friendly. 
I use calendar functionality all the time. If you want to use it as a business device, calendar functionality is going to be very important. We'll close out of this and jump back in and continue to look. Uh, we've got a music hub. So we'll go ahead and accept that disclaimer. So this is really only going to work in Europe, unfortunately, but it is a way for you to sort of download music. Uh, the carriers in Samsung have said this will not be present uh, when it does launch in the US. So we'll go ahead and sort of continue this tour and look at what other tweaks we have here as well. Uh, so navigation, you do have Google Maps navigation here, of course. Uh, you've got some Samsung apps. And uh, we're not sure whether or not all these are going to make it into uh, to the US version, although the majority of them uh, we assume will. So you've got Blink Speed, NTV application, or Hottest QWERTY Remote Control. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these here. You can see what it is. It's a free video app that delivers an endless riveting playlist of the most popular video. Sort of interest of time, I won't go and show you what each one of these are. You have to go ahead and install them. They're just uh, download links. So we'll go ahead and go back here. Uh, news and weather, sort of a custom Samsung job. Uh, I'll sort of acquire your location and pull in your most recent news. Uh, sort of a larger version of the news widget that you can get on the home screen. Go ahead and jump back home if it'll let me. Uh, Reader's Hub, this is where you would download ebooks. And it looks sort of familiar to what you'd see, um, say, on uh, the iPad or sort of any nice graphical interface uh, bookstore. So, books, news, or magazines. It's powered by Kobo here if you want to uh, buy books. Go ahead and agree to that very quickly. And I'll show you what the books application looks like as well, so you can sort of uh, figure out if the books are what you like. Uh, it looks really nice. It's very sort of intuitive. Uh, you can go ahead and view new releases and pick them up. Generally, books range anywhere from $2 all the way up to sort of $14 uh, for new releases. Go back home here and check out the rest of the applications here. And actually, speaking of books, let me jump back in and sort of show you what the bookstore looks like here. So here's ebook, or actually what the uh, your catalog of books is going to look like. You've got a shelf interface here. So the default book that comes with this uh, is The Marvelous Land of Oz. Now this does have a higher sort of pixel density than the iPhone, so you'd expect, or than the iPad rather, so you'd expect text to really pop uh, despite its smaller screen. And I will say that it's a very readable text. It looks very good. Not necessarily uh, as good as say e-ink will, uh, but this is definitely more readable than something like the iPad. It's also less glare uh, in direct sunlight. And as you go ahead and go from page to page, you sort of get a very familiar uh, animation look. You even get a little bit of a, a noise as you go through it. It's not as fast uh, as I would like, but you can certainly could go through and read a book uh, with relative ease. And it's a nice size uh, to go ahead and continue reading. You can go ahead and tap the side if you want to go back or forward a page. So I'll go ahead and go back home and take a look at some of the other applications that we're going to get. Uh, so you've got sort of an open office application. Let's go ahead and jump into YouTube. Uh, it's going to look very familiar, typical YouTube player. Uh, but let's see what a YouTube video looks like uh, on the screen aside. So I'll do a quick search for my channel, which is John Four Lakers. So John Four Lakers, it came up there. And we'll just play whatever the first one comes up here. Uh, Motorola Droid unboxing. Go ahead and see what that looks like. Uh, it's a pretty nice video experience whether you're watching HD video, which it can certainly handle, whether you're watching even flash content on the web, which I demonstrated in previous videos, uh, things just work well. Speakers are quite loud uh, as well, which are located right on the bottom there. So there's sort of me talking uh, in stereo. Go ahead and close out of this. Uh, from a browser standpoint, uh, things do look a little bit different. The browser has been tweaked uh, from sort of a standard Android browser. I'll show you that very quickly. I demonstrated Flash in a previous video, so I'm not going to recap that. Although this does support Flash 10.1, and suffice it to say, things do work very well. So you've got a few new icons up here. One looks like a phone is going to jump into the phone application, not surprisingly. Uh, the other one is going to open up your tab, so you can sort of view your tab browser, tabbed uh, uh, open applications or tabbed windows here. And you can go ahead and select your stars to sort of favorite. Uh, your windows if you like. Uh, browsing is very smooth, pinch to zoom works very well, uh, and overall things sort of work as you'd expect. Let's take a look at some of the uh, Samsung custom widgets that come on here. So we'll go ahead and jump into widgets, and you can take a look at sort of all the choices you're going to get uh, with your Galaxy S device. So AccuWeather, Analog Clock, Calendar, Calendar Clock, Daily Briefing, Feeds and Update, Google Search, Home Screen Tips, Latitude Market, News and Weather, Picture Frame, Power Control, Program Monitor, 
Yahoo Finance, Clock, and YouTube. Some of those are Samsung Custom, uh, and some of them are stock Android 2.2. And of course, you are also going to have sort of that same uh, wallpaper uh, that you had before, including live wallpaper. So you can sort of pick uh, what's here. There really aren't anything uh, custom, but the live wallpapers uh, are indeed present. So guys, this is sort of an uh, overview of the software of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. There's going to be a lot of competition in the tablet market in the coming months, and the Galaxy Tab is really aiming to take a significant piece uh, of that market share. So are you interested in the Galaxy Tab when it comes to uh, your carrier, whether you're in the U.S. or abroad, uh, or is it not your cup of tea? I'm uh, very curious to hear what you guys have to think, and leave your questions down below for things that you want to see uh, on the Samsung Galaxy Tab. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the website for all your tech news and for exclusive content. Hit me at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. I'm John Rettinger, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.